All right, folks, how you doing? It's a bit of shit the outside. It's pissing the rain, so I thought I'd come back to do Mars, Atlantis, and the Hollow Earth. So we'll get into part six. So disclaimer, copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances made for fair use for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. So once again, we're going back to Children of the Matrix by David Icke. Believed to be God. Thousands of years ago, there was a highly developed civilization in the Pacific, Lemuria or Mu. These peoples and others also founded another great culture, Atlantis. The knowledge that created these advanced societies from the stars, these and others came here from constellations like Orion, Draco, Andromeda, Lyra, and Boots, and other locations like the Pleiades, Sirius, Vega, Zeta, Reticuli, Arc, Arc, how do you say this? Arc, Tourist, Old Duberan, and, well, and elsewhere. Australian Aborigines, African tribes, the Babylonians, and South American Indians are just some of the diverse peoples who claim ancient connections with such places. Often these various extraterrestrial factions battled for supremacy. Restart after Atlantis. Lemuria was destroyed by a staggering cataclysm 11,500 to 12,000 years ago. Atlantis went the same way in stages. When Atlantis came to an end, the bloodlines and their gods began again in the Near and Middle East from about 4000 BC with an empire based in Sumer between the Euphrates and Tigris. Sumer, according to official history, was the start of human civilization, but in fact it was merely the restart after Atlantis. The seeding of extraterrestrial human bloodlines continued and so did the policy of placing the purest of these hybrids, the reptilian Nordics into the positions of royal and administrative power. Right, now where was I? Um, Sumer, Egypt, Babylon, the Indus Valley, and as the Sumer Empire expanded much further afield, similar seeding went on in other parts of the world. The Middle Eastern area was the most important. Primitive people. The Great Pyramid, which is nearly 500 feet high, consists of 6.5 million tons of stone and around 2.5 million individual blocks. Some weigh 70 tons, and in the other pyramids and walls are stones of 200, even 468 tons. There is enough stone in the Great Pyramid alone to build 30 Empire State buildings. Some of these stones at Giza and numerous temple sites were apparently taken from quarries hundreds of miles away. And we are told that primitive people did this. Baalbek in the Lebanon are structures thousands of years old, which include three enormous chunks of stone known as the Trilithon, each weighing more than 800 tons. Wow. Start all over again. The upheavals of the ancient world destroyed the golden age that existed before, and this is recorded in the stories of Atlantis and Lemuria. Humanity had to start all over again. If you believe that is far-fetched, think about today's society. What would happen to this technological society if we were faced now with a global catastrophe that devastated the planet? Within seconds, we would be sitting in a technological stone age. It would be a primitive, everyone for themselves. Find your own food, shelter and warmth, free for all. And as time and generations passed, the memory of the technological world we have today would fade and only be preserved in stories and myths which would more and more be seen as figments of the imagination. Most people would deny that such a world ever existed. Wrong on both counts. The history in that post-cataclysmic uh, post society would only begin with the records left by humanity once they had re-advanced to a certain level. Only then would they write or symbolise accounts of their history, and this would be based on stories passed verbally through the earlier generations. Such a point could take hundreds, even thousands 
of years. So it was after the cataclysms of our ancient past. The Sumerian period is estimated to have spanned the millennia between 4000 and 2000 BC. Historians say that other independent civilizations of great advancement also suddenly appeared in the same period in Egypt and the Indus Valley. But they are wrong on both counts. Sumer was not the start of what is called civilized society on this planet. It was the most significant one to emerge after the catastrophe that destroyed the Golden Age. Far, far, far older. The question still to be answered is whether the incredible feats of buildings like the pyramids originate before the Great Catastrophe, before the Great Cataclysms, or were they built by the Sumer Empire? I have no doubt that it was a mixture of both. In the light of the rapidly emerging evidence, at least some of the world's great ancient wonders go back to the Golden Age. They are far, far older than previously imagined. There is no doubt that unimaginable catastrophes were visited upon the Earth between 11,000 and 5,000 BC. The geological and biological evidence is overwhelming in support of the countless traditions that describe such events. They come from Europe, Scandinavia, Russia, Africa, throughout the Americas, Australia, New Zealand, Asia, China, Japan, and the Middle East, everywhere. The children of Mew, the most thorough and outstanding researcher of Lemuria Mu, was Colonel James Churchwood, who wrote a series of books. Churchwood visited remote monasteries in Asia and saw the ancient records of the motherland of Mu or Lemuria going back between 12,000 and 70,000 years. He saw how it was the center of a global empire that included Atlantis. In his book, The Children of Mu, he shows how the various racial types on Mu, including the blue-eyed, blondes, people of the world. These Lemurian races went east to become the Mayans of Central America. They went west to people Asia, China, India, and elsewhere, and created colonies in what became Egypt and Sumer, all genetic and cultural roads lead back to Lemuria, Mu, the motherland, and the very advanced civilization that existed. Churchwood says that Lemuria was destroyed around 12,000 years ago. W.T. Samsel dates the end of Lemuria much earlier, but many of their basic themes are similar. W.T. Samsel. Samsel's book is based on channeled information. Creation consists of an infinite number of wavelengths or frequencies and the world we perceive with our physical senses is merely one tiny fraction of the frequencies that exist. Samsel claims to be in contact with an entity formerly incarnate in Atlantis that now communicates from one of these other frequencies. It was about 100,000 years ago that the first examples of modern human forms appeared on the Muria. Samsel believes the Native American people are directly descended from Lemurians and Atlanteans who settled in the Americas before the first great cataclysm some 48,000 years ago, and Native American legends support this theme. Those earlier uh, days of Atlantis and Lemuria, uh, the people lived under the law of one, the understanding that everything is the same energy expressing itself in different forms. The royal lineage... Scientists call this the unified field theory. There is a common theme of Atlantean myths and legends, a civilization that began with positive intent and in harmony, taken over by forces that transformed it into a very dark place indeed. Samsel suggests that the war between the gods was a war between extraterrestrial races over the question of intervention in Earth affairs. He says that midway through the early Atlantean age, extraterrestrials, very tall, light-haired, light-skinned, albino-like people made contact with the Atlanteans. They began to manipulate Atlantean society and interbreed with humans to create hybrid bloodlines that became the royal lineage. The technology and physical appearance of these extraterrestrials led the Atlanteans, Lemurians, to see them as gods. The sons of Belial, the Temple of the Sun. They took over the government, economics, education, religion, and communications. Samsel says that the kings of the white royal lineage ruled Atlantis, and what we call the sons of Belial controlled the temple of the sun, their religious hierarchy and ritual network. Samsel goes on, the age of the Atlantic 
empire would prove to be a free-for-all for the sons of Belial. The dominant white tribe came to rule all aspects of Atlantean society. They disregarded the law of one, placed their faith in technology, and were driven by greed and the lust for power. This is sounding rather familiar. The Americas and Africa, the European countries, the Middle East, India and Tibet came under control. The one temple was divided and ineffective. And the Sun Temple flourished and the sons of Belial prospered. The Earth, a great conductor. Samsel says that the second great cataclysm brought an end to Atlantis. He believes that they used their super weapons against what we now call China. This is sounding real familiar. <laughs> and they try to utilize the earth as a great conductor through which to direct at their adversaries. Using the vast crystal, which is a common theme in Atlantean stories. Notice as well in Star Trek and Star Wars, crystals are used to power things. The crystal powers the lightsaber. In Star Trek, the crystals power the warp engines, or at least they did in the original series. Interesting, isn't it? So using the vast crystal, which is a common theme in Atlantean stories, Samson claims that the white race is the force behind global control. Throughout the history of the Earth and mankind, it has been the white tribe that has consistently exhibited the characteristics of their ancestral heritage. It is these who openly display many of the characteristics of alien beings. They have embraced technology above spirituality. Boy, is this absolutely sounding fucking familiar. They traditionally display a little regard for the earth. Yep, sounds exactly right. Nature or other species. My own view is that what he calls the sons of Belial are the reptilian bloodlines. The New Atlantis. The tussle between the Atlantean advocates of the law of one and the opposing uh, temple of the sun is highly significant. The temple of the sun has been the religion of... The Illuminati from Atlantis, Lemuria, right through to the present time. In fact, today's world is the new Atlantis. <laughs> Absolutely fucking nail on the head there. Especially the United States and North America. Uh, and the West in general. Uh, a mirror of the obsession with technological dominance. Uh, the law of one sees everything as connected. The temple of the sun represents the desire to present everything as unconnected. The Atlantean sons of Belial have sought to build the new Atlantis ever since. Atlantis was described by Plato. He was a high initiate of the Mystery School Network. Widespread volcanic activity. Or widespread volcanic activity. What did I just say? Can't talk today, sorry. <laughs> anyway, both the Azores and the Canary Islands, named after dogs, canine, and not Canaries, were subject to widespread volcanic activity in the time period Plato suggested for the end of Atlantis. Uh, how do you say this? Tashi light lava disintegrates in sea water within 15,000 years, and yet it is still found on the seabed around the Azores. Other evidence, including beach sand gathered from depths of 10,500 to 18,440 feet, reveals that the seabed in this region must have been above sea level. The oceanographer Boris Uwig wrote in National Geographic magazine that either the land must have sunk two or three miles or the sea must once have been two or three miles lower than now. When the Earth nearly died. I've got this book, by the way. It's a really good book. When European explorers first landed in the Canary Islands, the people said they were descendants of the Atlanteans and were shocked to realize that other people had survived the cataclysm that destroyed their homeland. The geological and biological evidence also suggests that the widespread volcanic activity that caused the sinking of the lands in the region of the Azores happened at the same time as the breakup and sinking of the land mass known as Appalachia, which connected what we now call Europe, North America, Iceland and Greenland. Even their degree of submergence appears to be closely related. How interesting then that Plato dated the cataclysm around 9000 BC and so do Alan and Delaire in their superb work when the earth ne nearly died around 9500 BC. Well, what's 500 years difference really in the grand scheme of things? The earth's magnetic field. 
before about 10,000 BC, the physical North Pole had been located on the land in the region occupied today by the Hudson Bay in Canada. Uh, something happened around that time that moved the whole surface of the Earth 3,000 miles to the south, thus relocating the land of the then North Pole to the Hudson Bay area. The land surface is only about 40 miles thick. If a meteor or another major body impacted the Earth, it could cause the crust to slide. Measurements of the Earth's magnetic field have shown that the north and south magnetic poles have changed places at least 171 times Wow, in the past 76 million years. That's a lot. Antarctica, ice free. Uh, Rand Flem Ath is convinced that at least a large pr proportion of Atlantis is what we now call Antarctica because of this 3,000 mile shift to the south. The world was mapped thousands of years ago with great accuracy. One made by Orontius Phineas in 1531 shows Antarctic, Antarctica with running rivers and ice-free mountains. The famous map drawn by Perry Reese in 1513 and found at the Palace of the Sultan of Constantinople in 1929 charts the South American coast with great accuracy and part of the coast of Antarctica before it was covered with ice 7,000 years ago. Yet Antarctica was not discovered officially until Captain Cook arrived there in 1773. Some of the mountain ranges in the Piri Reese map were not even found until 1952. Sunken land. Greenwich was chosen by a committee only in 1884, despite protest by one prominent member, the astronomer uh, royal of Scotland, Charles Piazzi Smith, that the zero degree meridian should run through the Great Pyramid. Flem Ath has further established that some 50 sacred sites in Mexico are aligned to a North Pole located in the Hudson Bay area, as it was before the cataclysm. Even those built since the upheavals have been placed on older sites that aligned with the old North Pole. Hapgood also told Rand Flem Ath that he was going to produce evidence in his next book of an advanced civilization on Earth 100,000 years ago. Lemuria now rests on the bed of the Pacific. The Polynesian tribes retain many legends of their sunken land. Geological upheaval. The Hopi tribe in Arizona remember Lemuria is a series of islands by which they travelled to the American continent. Once we know of these advanced civilizations that lasted hundreds of thousands of years and the extraterrestrial involvement in these, in their creation and demise, our whole view of the world and ourselves will change. So what happened to Mars, there is increasing acceptance that the Earth has suffered some colossal geological upheavals. These upheavals have obviously involved the solar system as a whole because every planet shows evidence of some cataclysmic events. There has been a much greater focus on Mars since the various space probes have been directed there and of course their rather unfortunate record of being lost or suffering technical problems. City on Mars. The failures followed the photographs taken in an area of Mars called Cydonia that appear to show the famous face on Mars and various pyramids. The best known writer and researcher on this subject is an American, Richard Hoagland. Got a lot of his stuff, by the way. A science journalist and a former advisor at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. One of his team claims to have compared the relationship of the non-natural phenomenon Cydonia on Mars with the layout of Avebury in Wiltshire, England, with its stone circle, standing rose, Silbury Hill and other ancient earthworks. He says he found that they are virtual mirrors of each other. Ancient texts reveal that the measurement of time was much related to Mars and March the 15th, the Ides of March or Mars, was a key date in their Mars-related calendar. The name Camelot means the city of Mars.